This is a review of um, how a for loop works in JavaScript. And um, so I'm just going to go over that and also trace a variable and its values through a loop sequence. Um, a for loop is used whenever, um, or actually one of the two types of loops in um, JavaScript that are used to have the computer repeat something instead of you having to do it over and over yourself. Um, it, this might look like a lot, but actually, if you just follow the um, structure of it, it's not too bad. A for loop is uh, starts out with the word for, and notice there are some parentheses, and inside there are three elements here. I'll talk about that in a moment. There are curly braces, and whatever you'd like to repeat, you put inside there. So let's talk about what it, how to set this up. And also, I'd like to mention, for those of you who have some anxiety with programming, this isn't anything you'll ever need to memorize. You can look at this, and all you need to do is swap in the parts that you need. And if you follow the structure, it should work just fine. OK, the first portion here is creating a counting variable and setting a starting value. In my example today, we're going to be um, looping through things f something five times. And so I'm starting the counting variable at one. The VAR is setting up a variable, i being the counting variable, and the initial value of 1. Now, i is often used as the counting va va variable. Um, I'm not quite sure why it is, but um, that's just a, a common thing. Okay. The next item is checking to see what condition needs to be true for this loop to run. In this case, um, I needs to be less than or equal to 5. So if you notice, we've got the less than symbol, equal 5. So if this is true, it will run the, the loop. If it's not true, it will then continue on after the loop. The next item is to increment the counting variable. If we didn't do this, the counting variable would always stay the same number, and it would continue forever. So that's no cool, not cool at all. So in this case, we're going to be adding 1 each time to, of the loop to the counting variable. So it'll take i, whatever the value of i is, add 1 to it, and it'll become the new value. So if it starts out at 1, it'll add 1 and become 2. So let's trace it and see how the computer sees this loop. Oh, also, sorry, um, whatever's in the curly braces will happen each time this loop runs. So when it does run, all you need to do is put whatever lines you want to repeat inside the curly braces. And I've made a little comment here just to indicate that. So let's go ahead and trace this. So the very first time through the for loop, it goes here and it sets the variable i equal to 1. And if you notice, the value of i, I'm keeping track of that down here, is set to 1. Now that only happens the very first time. It does not keep setting it, resetting it back to 1. Now it checks to see if i is less than or equal to 5. Now, depending on your loop, you may have different conditions you're checking for, but it's really just checking to see if this statement in this position is true. So in this case, is i less than or equal to 5? Well, the value of i is 1, and yes, 1 is less than or equal to 5. And that being the case, it will do whatever's inside the curly braces. And we have it here, document right line hello. And so it goes ahead and does that. So now down here in this side, I'm keeping track of the of the screen output. After it does that, it adds 1 to i. So it does the increment after it runs the loop. So each time, so now it goes i equals i plus 1. i used to be 1. It adds 1 to that. So now i is 2. OK? Now it does it again. It checks to see if this condition is true. Is i less than or equal to 5? Well, the value of i is 2, so yes i is less than or equal to 5, 2 is less than or equal to 5. So this is true. It runs what's in the curly braces, which once again is printing hello. And it adds 1 to i, so it now makes i 3. It keeps doing this until it this becomes false. So I'm going to kind of step through this. Is this true? Is 3 less than or equal to 5? Yes. It writes hello. It adds 1 to i. It checks again. Is it true? Yes, 4 is less than or equal to 5. It writes hello. It adds 1 to i. Is 5 less than or equal to 5? Well, yes, it's equal to 5, so it's still true. It writes hello. 
and it adds 1 to i. Okay, it checks again. Is this true? Is 6 less than or equal to 5? No, 6 is not less than or equal to 5. So then it exits the loop. So usually four, or four loops or any type of loops are inside of other parts of the program. So it would be programming or it would be doing its thing, hit the for loop, do what it needs to do, and then it would exit the loop right on this next line and continue on doing whatever else you're asking it to do. And that's a for loop.